Hi, this is Celeste with Treating Trauma with Yoga. So I think my topic today is going to be what do you do when your emotions overrule your mind and you end up completely dysregulated because of conversations with people who have a tendency to trigger you? Um, and how do you untangle yourself from those situations? So here I am on um, Thursday, and, uh, and I, am, I am in a fairly dysregulated state because of a conversation with someone who I know also has traumatic history, um, as do I, who has a tendency to trip me up. Um, pretty severely whenever we spend any uh, any length of time in any in any value of relationship um, I disconnected from the conversation that was happening on the phone and I said I need some space and I do uh, gaslighting is a real thing I don't know. I don't know that everybody that does it actually realizes that they're doing it. I guess maybe I'm optimistic and would like to believe that they really believe what they're saying too, at least sometimes. Um, but the problem is I've got a really good memory and I actually know what happened in the sequence that things happened in and what was said and how it went and they don't want to hear it. Right. So, um, you don't want to hear it and I don't get to say it and I am left with the, well, we just need to let it go. We just need to let it go. The problem is that letting it go does not clear the air. It does not resolve anything and it leaves you open repeatedly to having this kind of um, experience where, where someone basically says that you don't remember things right or that that you're forgetting or confusing how things happen or conversations it opens that door for those things to continue to happen as long as you associate with people who have a tendency to go in that direction and i have done it one more time so um i'm not perfect and I absolutely know that. I acknowledge that my uh, tendency is to believe, to want to believe one more time that the problem has gone away. Each time there is a period of, of somewhat that feels like sanity. Uh, this time it felt like real sanity because this person had, had told me that they were committing to a program uh, called nonviolent which I know of and believe in very strongly as a positive force for change in the world. I have not gone through their whole, their whole course, um, but it is on my radar of things to do. That being said, when this person reapproached me with the information that they were going through this course, my response was, oh, how wonderful. Okay, they get it. Okay, this will help. Right, we can do that, you know, and I'm willing to, to do it too. I'm willing to participate as much as I can, and, and I believe in this. And uh, we made it a couple of days before conversations started to go sideways, and they've gone sideways. And I, um, I am no longer willing to accept unacceptable behavior. And for me, it is unacceptable to, to gaslight me to say that I'm confused, which is kind of a sexist thing when it comes to male-female communication, right? It's like, poor little woman, she's just confused. Pat me on the head. I'm not confused. I know exactly what happened. I do remember. I mean, I may not remember all of the words verbatim. I don't I'd say that I do, did or do, but I do remember the sequence of events. 
and I do remember how they unfolded. And I have had those experiences with this person more than once, more, than, more times than I even care to say here on this video. But I am going to post this video because I guess I want everyone to know that it doesn't matter how much you know about trauma, CPTSD, dysfunctional relationships, gaslighting, childhood trauma, relationship trauma, physical abuse. It doesn't matter how much you know. You can still walk down that same road and fall in that same hole once again. Right. The difference is sometimes we get out quicker and sometimes we walk down a different road. What needed to happen and had been happening for the past four or five months was that I completely blocked this individual from my phone and my email and had nothing whatsoever to do with him. Um, and I let myself be lulled into believing that there had been a change and that there was change possible. I don't believe that today. Um, and I'm sad about that. I had hope. But it's soon enough that I can walk away um, without a lot of collateral damage uh, this time. Not so in the past. In the past, I believed because I wanted to believe one more time that the problem had gone away because I wanted to trust that this person was, was honest and truthful with me, that I wanted to believe that they were actually capable of overcoming the obstacles in their paths um, and finding a new way of relating with others. And this, this person may still do that. It is, it is possible that this person may still do that. But I can no longer be willing to accept what happens if they don't. And so I won't. And that's fine. But now where I'm at is if that's true, what do I do for me left with the, the results of a of increasingly difficult over the last couple of days, feeling of communication being kind of slightly off to today of things going, getting to just shy of exploding. And I am not willing to go to the place where they explode. So I cut off the contact. Um, I have work to do for me. And so you get to watch and be a part of that work. Part of it is talking about it. Part of it is being honest with myself that I, I wanted to believe that there would be a change. There was part of me that sat back and went, what are you doing? Why is this any different? This is one more time. I'm just going to try something, do something different, and it's not going to why are you why are you walking down this road? Um, so the why did I walk down the road? Part of the reason I walk down the road is I'm lonely. You know, I've been by myself since March and COVID COVID nineteen lockdowns started, and I am. I am missing companionship. I am missing relationship. It's probably not a bad thing for me to be in a place without relationship, relationships. Um, not without friendships, that's not a good thing. You know? Unfortunately, I still have meetings that I go to online, now yeah, on Zoom, um, and that's helpful. But the close companionship that I require to feel connected and secure, I don't have here. And I need that. And so I allowed myself to believe 
that maybe I could have that at least with him. And I can't. I can't. So what I'm doing for myself right now is allowing myself to grieve. That first needs to happen. And also, I need to calm down my heart rate. and calm my breathing so that I'm taking full deep breaths again through my nose and out through my mouth. Breathing in through my nose. Breathing out through my mouth. My hands are an eagle mudra thumbs together, palms over my chest on either side. There is a sense of warmth that I feel from my hands on my chest, a feeling of protection for my heart. As well as awareness of my breath moving in and moving out. And as I breathe, and as my heart begins to open once again. I feel the tears sitting just on the edge of, of being expressed. And I will express them. And I will express them here. I watched a really amazing video um, this past week from a woman um, that is part of the Nonviolent Communication, NBC for short, um, practice on YouTube, um, who cried on camera. And I thought, wow, she's got guts. You know what? I want to have those guts. I want to be able to do that. I don't know if I can, I'm going to try to just be here and do that. My normal um, way of handling this kind of thing is to numb it out and shut it down until I'm private and quiet. Nobody can get to me and I know that I'm safe. I'm not safe right now. Even though I'm alone and it's quiet and I'm in my own home, and there's nobody here. I'm here. And I don't trust my own instincts sometimes. Well, it's not true. I have, that's not true. I have very good instincts. I choose not to listen to them. I believe I want to believe. So I recognize that in me. I believe people who lie to me. Even when my instinct says, oh no, honey, that's not for you. <laughs> I still have a tendency to want to go there anyway. So I will say this, it is important 
to have community. It is important to have people you can call. It is important to have friends who love you unconditionally and are willing to listen and are willing to stand by you and are willing to accept you even, even when you don't accept yourself. And the truth is, I do have those friends. They're just far away from me now. I could call them. And I haven't yet today. I could have called before I decided I was going to get back involved in that, in, in the interaction with this person. And I did not. I know better. Sometimes it doesn't matter what we know, I think. Sometimes we want something so much. We just choose to believe, even though we know, even though we know it's hopeless. Even though I know it's hopeless, I choose to believe, even when I know it's help hopeless. I know, I know that. So, breath. Mudra. There are many different hand positions that create different effects in mudra. There are many different breath practices that create calm or create more activation when you feel depressed create a sense of equanimity and balance, can find, help you find excitement and joy. Movement practices that do the same. I'm gonna do some of that today. There's a practice that I think will help me, so I'm going to do it for you. It's a course that I took in, in, the, in my process of uh, learning yoga therapy and they have several practices for mood regulation and they are powerful practices and they work there's lots of lots and lots of yoga practices that are powerful and work this one is called breath of joy except with breath of joy you can also just do the movement and that will work to bring you up from depression. But it also works if you're angry, if you're, if you're activated, which I am, if you're dysregulated, it helps you move that stuff out of your body. And that is exactly what I need to do right now. So I'm going to do that for you. So you start this practice standing and I would recommend if you're going to do this that you do a little bit of stretching first if you haven't already done some stretching during your day. I just want to make sure I can reach my arms out to the sides again. Okay. So the practice is breath of joy and the mantra that I am using with breath of joy. is di ri ha and these sounds these tones don't have a meaning in and of themselves they are seed sounds and those seed sounds um, have meaning 
mostly relating to heat and um, the sun and energy. So that's it. They are they are all three deep, three hot seed stems, and they go and it goes like this: arms come to center, parallel with your mat, out to the side, up in the air, and forward and down. So it's fairly um, energetic. You start with your arms parallel to your mat forward, and out to the side is D. Ready? And ha! Inhale as you bring your arms to center. D, re, ha! 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 laws of energy are that you can't just shift from one thing to the next. You have to start where you are and shift downward and down regulate, which is what I'm working on doing. Um, down regulate with movement, with breath, and then move into something else, right? After you get that energy moving and out of you, and then you can do the next thing. <sighs> so next, what I'm feeling like is Sufi circles, which most of you, if you have experience with yoga, probably already know. Sufi circles are literally just rolling. I'm sitting cross-legged. You can do these sitting in a chair, um, as well, or sitting on your heels, although it's harder to do on your heels. Rolling around forward and back. Exhaling forward. Inhaling as you come up. And as you can see, there's still movement happening here and I'm moving the belly and I'm moving my hips. And this is one of those situations where my belly and hips have a lot of issues to work through because this is where in the body this particular energy is stored for me as well as the heart. So my whole torso really feels the need to move and shift energy. Full breath in, complete exhale through your mouth. And one more time. This way, and I'm gonna shift and go the other way. I shift the position of my feet when I do that as well. You don't have to, it's your choice. out, breathing in, eyes open or closed. And 
And by the way, no, I'm not counting. <laughs> I'm listening to my body. And I'm moving where my body tells me when my body tells me to move, which is harder than it sounds. <laughs> For somebody who likes to be even and regulated and, you know, always kind of in charge of everything that is happening in my life, that is challenging to not know. And it's why I'm doing it. <laughs> because, because sometimes I don't have the answers. You know, I mean, there are things that I have the answers to, but there are also a lot of things that I don't have any answers to. I don't have the why or the how. Um, and that bothers me a lot. I want to know why. I want to know how. I'd like to tell you that I have it all under control and that I have it either I, A, all figured out, or B, that I don't have it all figured out, but I'm willing to let go of it. And Many times I am willing to let go of it and turn it over, but not always, not always. Um, I still try, I try today to figure it out, to reason it out, to work it out until I realized I'm now dysregulated and I can't reason it out, work it out, figure it out. And this person is dysregulated and they can't either. And I am detaching. I am stepping aside. Um, and so that today is progress for me, even in spite of the fact I'm getting warm, <laughs> in spite of the fact that I allowed my boundaries to um, be set aside. Um, I'm not I'm not, I'm not back at square one. I'm not. I made a lot of progress. Um, people with substance use issues would call it a slip. That's foul. Um, there's a wonderful speaker in 12-step programs, um, of which I am a member. Um, and I will say that with gratitude I'm not identifying which program but the speaker says not here anyway um, this speaker says I am addicted to mind-altering men and when I first heard her say this <laughs> I was jumping up and down going, oh my god she knows me right <laughs> It's like, yeah, she does, because you and she have some stuff in common. And when I listened to the rest of her, her what were then um, eight-track tapes, <laughs> I'll tell you how long ago, and I'll tell you who she is, because then you don't know how old she is. But now you know how old I am, or kind of. Um, not that that's a surprise. Um, <laughs> I was, I was floored by the fact that she, that she said that. And I went, oh, yeah, I get it. That's me. And it is. It's me. I am addicted to mind altering men. And sometimes they just look too good to pass up. You know? Even if too good is, I'm enrolling in this program and it's, it's 10 weeks and, and I start on Monday and it's, you know, and I'm doing this for 10 weeks, at which point a, a rational response on my part, if I felt like I really needed to respond, could have been, I'm glad to hear that. Let me know when you're done with the course. I would like to hear what you feel you've learned. That would have been a miraculous thing to say. That is not what I said, as you probably already figured out. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better because I'm looking at it, I'm addressing it, I'm working through it with practices of yoga, breath and movement, sound and mudra, mantra and mudra. Um, 
And I've got another breath practice that I'm going to show you, which is actually not a yoga practice, but is really wonderful. It actually comes from um, somatic experiencing. Uh, and I am blessed to work with people um, in, the, in, in the assistance for those of us with trauma, CPTSD and PTSD, um, dissociative disorders, anxiety, depression, and the whole spectrum of that. And so there are somatic experiencing practitioners, therapists that are part of the group that I work with. And they taught this practice to clients and the clients taught me this practice. And I absolutely love it. They love it too, which is why I've adopted it. So this practice I don't know what this, the real name of the practice is, but what it looks like, I'm going to come close to the camera, is your top teeth, your top front teeth go just on the lower lip, not biting, but just pressing against the lower lip. And you make the sound of V, like, like that. Except you do this repeatedly. So you take a full deep breath in, And as you exhale. <laughs> I'm going to keep my eyes closed here. And when it feels right, take a full deep breath in. 
Gently let that breath go. So you may notice the positioning of my hands right now. And this is from yet another practice in which I am, I am a student. Um, and it is an energy practice, it's energetic practice, and it's noticing the difference between the energetic feminine, which is this, and the masculine, which is this. And you'll notice if you have sensitivity to energy, um, you may notice that this and this feel very differently in your body. And I'm asking for this, for that funnel of energy and wisdom to move from the earth using me as a conduit moving up through my body through my legs and my hips and my abdomen and my chest my shoulders through my head through the top of my head and out and out into the universe it's a channel it's an energy channel. It is where my energy needs to be directed. This is not productive. This is not productive. It is limiting, self-limiting. This is productive. This is my choice today. And I'm feeling tingling in my fingers. <laughs> And I don't know how you felt with that breath practice, the practice, but I love that. And I think why I love it is because the vibration of that sound goes into my head and calms. I think it's calming the amygdala. I believe it's calming. And then moving down into the, the, uh, the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems via the vagus nerve, resolving and shifting things there as well, <sighs> creating the down regulation that I need right now. Thank you for participating with me by being here, by listening, by witnessing. It is my hope it is my sincere wish that I find within myself the ability to be authentic and honest with my feelings here as I would be honest and authentic with my feelings and my thoughts with a sponsor or with trusted friend and so I hope that watching me process maybe can help you process whether it's now or in the future with my hands to my heart I'm going to use something that I learned from Tommy Rosen, who I, I follow and love on Recovery 2.0. Tommy's prayer is the Recovery 2.0 prayer, which is higher power, universe, mother, God, put me in the places you would have me be, with the people you would have me be with doing the things that you would have me do. Thank you for the joys and the challenges of my life. Amen. Namaste. Svaha. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs>
Oh, I forgot Satnam. Satnam. Swaha. Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you, Tommy, for that. Thank you, everyone else, for being here today. Thank you for being here for me. See you next time.